name is Pat Ward, and I'm from uh, Duluth, Minnesota. And Eric Glassy asked me to say a few words about my humble origins. I uh, went to medical school, the National University of Ireland, between 1953 and 1959 on the Galway campus on the West Coast. Graduated from there in uh, June of uh, 1959 with an MB degree. Now, uh, that might be foreign to uh, doctors in the US, but MB st stands for Medical Bachelor. It is the equivalent of an MD degree here in the USA. There is such a thing as an MD degree over there too on the British Isles, and that stands for Doctor of Medicine, which is based on the equivalent of boards in internal medicine. So if you had some sort of boards, it would be an MD degree over there. It's a postgraduate degree, but the basic degree is MB. Furthermore, in that regard, I should tell you that uh, doctors who graduate from medical school over there and become surgeons, they lose the MB altogether. They become known as Mr. It's a strange thing. It's a feature of medicine on the other side of the Atlantic. Surgeons are referred to as Mr. So-and-so. All right. So anyway, I came to this country, to the United States, on July, I think, the 19th, 1959, uh, shortly after graduation. And uh, I had already set up an internship at Mercy Hospital of Chicago, which is one of the part of the farm of the Loyola University. So I did a rotating internship there from, 90, from, the, from summer of 59 to June 1960. And during that time, I found out that I was not interested in patients. And I had remembered back to when I was in medical school when pathology seemed to be such a fascinating story. But by the time I had eliminated the possibility of doing clinical medicine, it was getting lit in the academic year of my rotating internship. So I settled for a local residency in pathology. That was at the Illinois Central Hospital, which is a fine little hospital on the south side of <clears throat> Minneapolis, and there I did a lot of autopsies for a year. I had uh, acquired a residency at the Mallory Institute of Pathology in Boston. So I went there from 1961 to 1963 and did two further years of anatomic pathology at the Mallory Institute of Pathology uh, and worked under Dr. Stanley Robbins who was, incidentally, the greatest teacher I have ever encountered in my uh, years in medicine. Wonderful chap. Uh, we were very good friends. From there, I went to the University of Minnesota uh, in Minneapolis as a fellow in laboratory medicine, or clinical pathology, as it was known. I had a fellowship from the NIH for three years to uh, do CP at the University of Minnesota, which I did, and that included a year or more as a fellow in the Department of Hematopathology under Dr. Uh, Brunning and Dr. Sundberg, Dr. Dorothy Sundberg. They were my teachers for the time I spent as a, a hematopath fellow. I was one of the first, I'd say, two to three fellows at the University of Minnesota Fellowship Program in uh, hematopathology. Uh, from my last few weeks in residency there, I was drafted into the U.S. Air Force where I went to uh, I was stationed in stationed in Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. 
It's a wonderful assignment, had a great time for two years. Saw a lot of pathology there. That was in the biggest Air Force base in the world, Eglin Air Force Base, which is as big as a few of the states uh, up on the East Coast. Spent there, spent some time there until 1968 and got my uh, first job coming out of the Air Force in February 1968. And I came out and I took over as head of pathology at Monsanto Hospital at Minneapolis. The previous staff had uh, resigned, so it was, so I was brought aboard as head of pathology there, and I recruited Des Burke, a fellow classmate of mine from Ireland, uh, and uh, Dr. Chuck Horwitz, who was a fellow resident at the Mallory Institute of Pathology. So the three of us promptly in 1968 uh, and 69, set up a course for senior medical students at the University of Minnesota. And we got immersed in that and set up a course in uh, only for the senior students, a course in the selection of lab tests in a given clinical situation and the interpretation of uh, lab tests and the pitfalls of lab test interpretation at the at uh, Monsanto Hospital, and we had we had huge numbers of students. The first the first couple of years we took, uh, I think it was something close to two hundred students per year uh, in uh, groups varying up to fifty per group, six groups, for courses lasting six weeks. And that was six hours a day for six weeks. And that course is still going out at the University of Minnesota now in 2017, although they don't, uh, they do it for, I think for four weeks and for maybe three or four hours a day. But the course still goes on, a very popular course. There seems to be a need for that sort of thing. Uh, after 1983, uh, I accepted a position as Chair of Pathology at the University of North Dakota in uh, Grand Forks. And I stayed there until 1983 when personal circumstances uh, resulted in my having to leave uh, and thereby hangs a tail. However, this is not the time for that tale. From there, I sought another chair and wound up as chair of pathology at, uh, I left there in 1987. Uh, came to the University of Minnesota Duluth, which is a smaller medical school, a satellite of the main university in Minneapolis. And uh, that's where I was until, night, until 2000. At 11, spent 24 and a half years at Duluth. I retired in uh, 2011, and uh, that was the end of the department as we knew it at uh, Duluth at that time. There is no department here now as such, no department of pathology, and thereby hangs another tale. However, uh, I am now busily involved in writing. Uh, up some of the material that I've acquired in my long period in American medicine, American pathology. And uh, there you have it. That's my background.